There's a reason why Regina was one of the most popular characters on Once Upon a Time, otherwise known as the Evil Queen. But today I want to dive into, was she really as good a character as people thought? And in retrospect, years after the show aired, was her redemption actually handled in a convincing, effective way? Now, she's one of my favorite characters in the show, so I felt like I just had to make this video and she deserved her own video. I do have a whole Once Upon a Time playlist and I'll link it down in the description if you want to binge watch all my videos because I'm absolutely loving this resurgence of videos on this topic at the moment. I don't know if you've noticed on YouTube, but we're kind of bringing the show back and it's high time because we have been sleeping on this show for years. This was inspired by a comment from Scott who said, I would love to see a video on the back and forth that they constantly kept trying to pull with Regina. Anytime that poor woman found happiness, they were so willing to rip that away from her. I understand that they wanted her to earn her happy ending, but at some point I think they just needed to give her a break. And quite a few people were engaging with this comment. So I was like, okay, okay, we're doing it. Regina's arc was really inspiring and empowering for many people especially because it tied into the show's theme of hope and happy endings and believing in the good in people, even the worst of people. Anyone that I speak to, most of them say that Regina is their favorite character. And no wonder, she's funny, she's witty, she's snarky, and we kind of love to hate her. And the great thing about the actress who plays her is she's so versatile. So when she's being sweet and full of vulnerability, we resonate with her and we want the best for her. But then when she's an evil queen bitch mode, she handles it so effectively that you can't help but like her and be invested in every single scene, even when she's she's doing terrible and manipulative things. So let's get into it. The first thing that rubbed people the wrong way and made them root for Regina is the fact that there's this narrative in the show that she's not Henry's real mother at the beginning. And a lot of people were saying they disliked the show because of its anti-foster system or anti-adoption narrative in the early seasons. Now, I'm not necessarily saying I agree with this and I think this is accurate, but this is something I've noticed when I was researching the show is people complaining on forums or in articles saying, why are they so against adoption in the show? Poor Regina, like she may not be Henry's biological mother, but she still raised him and actually knows him. And then Emma just walks in. <laughs> Emma gave him up for adoption. Emma doesn't know him when she meets him, but she just cruises in, decides that he needs saving, decides that she's his real mom, and then is trying to remove him away from Regina. And I've seen so much controversy and discourse around this with other people saying, no, Regina was abusive and volatile and Emma did what any normal person would do, which is realize that Henry was in an unsafe situation and remove him. This is the first thing that I want to address because the theme of motherhood is so strong in the show, parenting. And when we first meet Regina, when she's in her villain era, all we know is that she's nasty and the evil queen, but she's also Henry's mother. And he seems to be the one person in the world that she actually cares about. If you look at season one, Regina is in her despicable evil queen phase, seems very irredeemable, extremely manipulative, always five steps ahead. But what makes her a great villain is she's not all bad. She does have a soft spot, which is her son, Henry. And historically, even some of the greatest villains that, let's say, started wars or did terrible things, even they may have had a soft spot for animals or a wife that they loved. Just because someone is a villain doesn't mean that they don't have people that they care about. And it actually makes them much more interesting, complex characters than a moustache twirling, stereotypical bad guy, right? So what made Regina such a good character in season one is that she could do the worst, most despicable things, but then it's very complicated because she doesn't want Henry to think less of her. She doesn't want her son Henry to think of her as a bad person but yet she goes about it in all the wrong ways. There is an immediate rivalry set up between Regina and our good guy, main character, Emma. And the reason why a lot of people enjoyed it is because Emma wasn't a goody two-shoes or an annoying protagonist. She was extremely likable, but also people kind of rooted for Regina. And that's why their rivalry as mothers who didn't want to co-parent 
or Emma tried to and Regina wasn't working with her. That's why people liked it so much because you kind of want both of them to win and Emma wasn't a boring, one-dimensional, annoyingly moral protagonist either. So it was actually really interesting seeing the rivalry and the tension between her and Regina. It's some of my favorite parts of the show actually because Emma was sort of trying to like work with her and be civil and be polite. And Regina was actually the one who was very defensive. She was worried about Emma taking Henry away from her. And because she's a villain, she doesn't know how to share. So it wasn't something in her mind that was up for negotiation. She wasn't like, oh yeah, sure, let's spend a week with Henry each. She was like, no. Um, I'm Henry's mother. I don't know who you are. You just cruised in, but you need to leave. And I reckon a big part of that was because subconsciously she didn't feel like that worthy a parent for Henry and she could see Emma's goodness and she was worried maybe that her son would start bonding more with Emma than with her. And that's why she was so overprotective of him and so wary of Emma. But as because she's so irrational it's very easy to dislike Regina however you've got to acknowledge that there is some leeway we can make for her in the sense that who would be delighted if some random woman came in claiming to be Henry's mother and wanting more invo involvement in his life wanting to spend more time with him someone who previously has been gone for years and hasn't raised him, hasn't been there through the changing the diapers, through the sleepless nights, through the hard moments, has missed his entire early childhood formative years. And now she's coming in basically being like, Regina, you're not a fit mother. I know how to parent him. I literally sign legal documents saying that you're his mother, but now I wanna change that. So there is a level of, I guess, understanding we can have for Regina because Emma effectively made a promise and a legal promise, and now she's just appeared out of nowhere and turned Henry's life upside down because Henry seemed so curious about his background and about where he came from, and he was so invested in getting to know Emma. Can I help you? Are you Emma Swan? Yeah, who are you? My name's Henry. I'm her son. For his adoptive mother, that's got to hurt because Henry's taking more curiosity in his biological mom than the one that he knows who raised him. And it's also the fact that in the pilot, Henry effectively ran away from Regina to go and find Emma. He's constantly calling Regina the evil queen, giving her these names, and then is wanting to spend more time with Emma, skipping school, keeping it a secret, wanting to spend time with Emma. And Regina's worst fear would be that Henry would just abandon her and leave and treat her badly because he's in his rebellious stage. He's not even a teenager yet and he's behaving like one because he's rebelling, right? Now, this is where the issue came in and why people found it hard to root for Regina because she then took all her anger out on Emma, even though it was actually more anger at Henry and anger at herself. And then she blames Emma. Emma's like her scapegoat and she's like, it's Emma's fault. But the truth is, Emma didn't want involvement in Henry's life. Henry came and actively sought her out. Emma didn't want anything to do with it. And the only reason why Emma started to step in more as a mother was because she started to emotionally bond with Henry and she saw what a terrible, nasty woman Regina was and she got scared because Henry seemed so antagonistic towards his mother, so against her. And Emma was like, what's going on? Is Regina even a good fit? And her worries were completely understandable. If Regina had seemed like a really loving, gracious mother, I doubt Emma would have had as many concerns. And I think a big reason she wanted to stay was because she was unsettled, because Emma has this superpower where she can tell if someone is lying. She's very good at it. The only time she's not good at it is if her judgment is clouded, but if she's got a clear head, she just sees situations for what they are. And Regina had said, I love Henry but she was lying and Emma was thrown off by that and it so deeply unsettled her that she decided to stay in Storybrooke for another week and just keep an eye on Henry because who can blame her? Like she herself was raised in this terrible foster care system Unfortunately, it wasn't a good one. It was a bad one where she was continually mistreated. She didn't feel that she'd be a good mother and all she wanted was for Henry to be taken care of. So she gives him up for adoption, hoping that he'll have a better life. Then she finds out that his adoptive mother is awful and 
not emotionally present for him. And you can imagine how much it scared Emma because she was like, I wanted him to have a good life, not be emotionally abused. And also he's an only child. He doesn't have siblings. So Regina is very smothering and all her attention is on him. Regina doesn't even have a husband. So it's just her and Henry, her and Henry, just <laughs> her and Henry all the time. And you, oh my gosh, it must have been so suffocating for Henry and Emma could see that. So can you really blame her for having a heart and being worried about her biological child's safety? I don't blame her. So Regina is not only worried about Emma taking Henry away from her, but also about her taking Sheriff Graham away from her because he's basically under Regina's thumb. And Regina at this point of the show doesn't understand the concept of love. She just thinks that love is control and she doesn't get the distinction. But as a result, because Regina, when I'm giving you this picture of her, seems like the worst possible person you can imagine, which she is at this point in the show, I really don't think they could have made her any worse. A lot of people were therefore saying this is an anti-adoption narrative and they were getting very riled up by it. And they were saying that the show was pushing this idea that because you gave birth to someone, therefore you have the right to suddenly be a part of their life and shake up their plans just because you're linked by blood, that therefore there's some kind of obligation to have a relationship. And I get where people are coming from. I know it could totally come across that way, but I really disagree with this sentiment because the show is more about toxic parenting as opposed to being an adoptive parent is bad. Adoption is bad. I mean, I get the idea of what people are saying because it happens so often in the show. It happens with Emma and Henry. It happens with Rumpel and his dad. And this idea is that they should be trying to have a relationship because they're related. Then Rumpel and Neil with Rumpel really trying to win his son back and have a relationship when Neil wants nothing to do with him. And you can see it with Cora and Regina with them kind of coming back to each other and separating again. But Cora finding it really difficult to let Regina go because Regina's her daughter. So I understand what people are saying, but I don't think that means the show is saying blood parents are the way to go. Blood relatives are the best relatives because that's not true. And we see many blood relatives in the show who have very unhealthy relationships. And just because they're related by blood, it doesn't mean that they're happy or that they want to stay in each other's lives at all. There's also nothing in the show to me that indicates Adoptive parents are bad because they don't care about their kids because Regina did care about Henry and look if they'd stayed with her being a terrible mother a terrible adoptive mother throughout the show then I would say that's not okay but thing is she learned to love Henry properly and by the end of the show she was a really excellent mum and it was a really beautiful arc to see because Henry saw the good in her believed in her she became better and he has a unique relationship with her and with Emma but he loves both of them and he considers them both his mums. And we do see many blood parents in the show who don't do a good job of it for example Ruby's mother that was never going to work, that entire relationship. The whole reason Emma gave Henry up in the first place is because she thought that he would be better off with an adoptive parent who could properly and financially take care of him. And Cora was a terrible mother, even though she raised and gave birth to Regina. However, I still understand what people are saying because... Regina was so evil in the first season that a lot of people were willing to overlook the role that she'd played in Henry's life as a mother and were basically saying, oh, well, who cares what she wants? She's not really his mother anyway, Emma is. And a lot of people saying, Emma, you're his mother, you're his mother, and kind of negating the fact that Regina is also his mother. Or Snow White saying to Emma, you know what, if you want to take Henry out of state, you can, you're his mum. And actually, no, that's not true. You do need to still check with Regina if that's okay. An article written about the portrayal of adoption and foster care by M on TV Tree said, Regina actively threatens and insults Emma in her attempt to exclude her from their shared son's life. Emma, who was presented as a hero, blatantly ignores Regina's wishes and develops a secretive relationship with Henry. Regina is portrayed as evil throughout most of the first season. And regardless of whether she is or not, the worst thing is that she and the viewers are constantly reminded that she is not Henry's real mother. And to be fair, I do agree with this. I don't think it was the show's intention. It's not like they planned this and they were like, haha, this will be awesome. But unintentionally so maybe this happened just through Regina 
being villainized so much and us being encouraged to root for Emma that it could be perceived this way. But the article goes on. The most helpful thing a therapist does is threaten Regina. He tells her that if she doesn't treat Henry the way that he sees fit, then he'll side with Emma if there's ever a custody case. This is completely ridiculous because presumably Emma signed away her custodial rights and Regina is legally his mother. The whole point of adoption paperwork is that it provides stability for the child and security for both the adoptive and birth parents. You can't just swoop in 10 years after an adoption has been finalized and declare that you're taking back custody of the child. I also can't believe that no one in the town is pointing out that regardless of anyone's desire, Regina is and always will be Henry's real mother. Emma is the intruder here. She gave him up out of her own desire and he is Regina's child. And I get this. It's like because Regina was a bad mother, people were therefore saying that means she's not his real mother. But the truth is she was his mother. She just was a bad one, but she still raised him, you know? So I'm very on the fence about this, but the one thing I do agree with, which this article talks about, is that the foster care system was framed in a really negative, sad light. And if you didn't know anything about the foster care system and you watched this show, you would assume that it's kind of bad no matter what for every person. Um, and I agree with that. Um, TV Tree continues, Emma grew up in the foster care system and repeatedly references the bad experiences she had. She even states that the families only do it for the money. While I recognize that the writers can say this was her character's experience, it still made me feel bad for the thousands of American families who welcome foster children into their homes and honestly do the best they can to look after those children. And when it came to the Hansel and Gretel storyline because they didn't have parents, Emma will do whatever it takes to keep the children out of foster care. She believes that forcing the children on their uninterested father is a better idea. He's a mechanic who probably doesn't make a great deal of money and was completely unaware that he had nine-year-old twins because their mother never told him. Hmm, I wonder why. And repeatedly tells Emma he does not want the responsibility. Luckily, Emma forces him to feel guilty about his decision because the children are so clearly better off with him than with a trained foster family, sarcasm implied. The article concludes, there are children who are failed by the system. Emma was one of them and it was an understandable choice by the writers so far as it helps explain her character's motivation. But to repeatedly portray foster care and adoption in a negative light is not a necessary part of the plot. And I get what they're saying. Like they could have made it clear that for some people, the foster care system is an amazing experience and showed some examples of that. I mean, if you understand the foster care system really well, then you can make your own decision. But if you're really uninformed and you watch this show, then yeah, you probably would think it has a bad rep and you would get a very bad impression of it. So I thought that was interesting. But now we've discussed that, let's get into season one of Regina's character. Regina in season one is presented as the ultimate big bad of the story, a bigger villain than Rumpel even. Someone who's motivated by rage and jealousy and is a very ugly person. Regina is mayor and she's really enjoying the power and the idea that everyone is trapped under this curse and they are just under her thumb and they can't do anything. But she's really thrown off course when Emma shakes things up and comes to town and wants to become sheriff and it's like, all the power is now not in Regina's favor. Before, Graham was the sheriff, but he was under Regina's thumb, so technically she had the power. But now Emma's trying to become sheriff. She's stirring the pot and Regina doesn't like it. Now, this is something that I need to talk about. I don't think Regina's redemption was as good as people say it is because people are calling it flawless. It was really great, but was it believable? No. I still think that they probably should have redeemed her because it worked really well. But if you look at it in terms of like a realistic standpoint, it just doesn't really make much sense. I would say the reason is because Regina is so evil that she was past the point of no return in season one. And I don't mean like, oh, she made some bad decisions. She wanted to rule the town. She ego and power went to her head a little bit. No, I'm saying she was the most dominating, the most manipulative, heartless, cruel woman ever. And I don't know how there's any going back from that. And I think because people watched the whole show and it was years ago, they forget how scary and awful Regina was, that even her own son was terrified of her. People were terrified of her. And some of the things she did, people forget about, I guess, because it was a long show and a lot happened, but 
if you look piece by piece at what she did, it's shocking that she became even remotely a nice person or even a hero by the end, like not even an anti-hero, a hero. Like look at what she did to Hansel and Gretel. She wanted them to get something from the Sleeping Witch's house, so she sent them there. They were the first to succeed. All the other kids that she'd sent there in the past went to the witch's house and were killed and were eaten alive. So, so she has thrown potentially, who knows how many, dozens, hundreds of children under the bus and that's on her. That guilt is on her shoulders. And she massacred entire villages for fun or she threw people in jail to be executed for no reason just because they'd annoyed her. And the worst, because we knew this character, was what she'd done to Graham, which was taking his heart. So she's controlling him. He's like her slave. He can't think for himself or feel for himself. And so she was doing this in the real world and in the fairy tale world, sleeping with him, saying, take him to my chambers, doing things to him. And then in the real world, it's that same dynamic of whenever she wants him, he's there and he can't move on. Nor is he allowed to have any romantic interest in Emma, apparently, either. It is an awful thing to do to someone, to take away their autonomy, their freedom of choice, and it is R-A-P-E, no doubt about it. And that was something that was way too extreme and made her character effectively irredeemable. Now, one of my commenters said, the reason Regina is never held accountable for her essay of Graham is because the writers dead ass don't see it that way. I remember an interview where they said that they just wanted something fun and sexy and didn't realize how it would be seen in different lenses. Truly idiotic. And that got like 370 thumbs up. That was on my deep dive into Once Upon a Time. So maybe that was part of the problem is the writers didn't realize how terrible it would look and just thought it would add some drama or something, right? And another one of my commenters, said, thank you for talking about Graham. I feel like everyone just sweeps him under the rug. He is the chief reason I was never able to get on the Regina redemption train. And honestly, I totally get you. When I watched season one and I saw how she effectively tortured Graham and then killed him at the end when he didn't abide by her wishes and how Emma never found out what happened to him and she was never held accountable for that and never even really had to sit with what she did to him. It took me so many seasons to really get over that because I was so sickened. I was so, it made me nauseous. Like I was so disgusted that it was very hard for me to try and just go, forget about it. Who cares, you know, and move on because that's not something you can just move on from. And all I could think about in later seasons was poor Graham, you know, he never got a chance. Why did she do that to Graham? You could just argue she's a sick and twisted predator, which she is. But what were her motivations? I think one of the reasons is that she has always wanted to be loved and to feel special, but she goes about it in all the wrong ways. And what she does is because she pushes and she pushes and she tries to take and take and mold people into what she wants them to be, she's always the chaser. And what does, what does anyone have to do when you're chasing too hard? They have to run away. So then people would run away and she'd get more anxious and then try and pull them in more and they'd get more and more like almost turned off and grossed out. And that was the case with Graham. She couldn't just be herself, so she felt like the only way to make him love her was to force him into that situation because she so inherently believes that she's unlovable. That's what made her a great character. We see her relationship with her mother. We get her backstory, which is good. We see how her mother abused her from a young age, physically and emotionally, and controlled everything about Regina's life and even killed Regina's fiance. So, although it doesn't justify Regina's behavior, it helps us understand her and what's going on with her, which is that she basically believes that no one could ever truly care about her, but she really wants to feel like a part of a community. She just doesn't go about it the right way. And one of my commenters said this on my deep dive and it got over 400 thumbs ups. And they said, I feel like one of the reasons season one cursed Storybrooke isn't actually so bad is that deep down Regina has always just wanted to be part of a flourishing community and she doesn't know how to get that without wiping everyone's memory and forcing them to be around her and not having to change any of her behavior that makes people run the other way. For a queen whose surface motivations are violent and vengeful, it seems a bit tame. But for the character deeply starved for familial love and a community, she's always tried to force these things with magic since it's the only way she knew how. It makes perfect sense. And this comment reframed it a lot for me because when I film my deep dive, I basically said, I don't get why her curse was so lame and not that 
like intense or impressive like why was it such a pathetic curse couldn't she have done something a bit more hardcore why not just kill everyone and I think the reason why she kept everyone alive including Snow White and Charming is because she didn't really want to kill them she wanted a community and that's what makes her such a great character and that's what makes her relationship and her redemptions with the Charming so beautiful later on when she's friends with them and when she actually praises them is she says something like I always wanted to be a part of a family I just didn't know it was possible and I didn't handle it well I think she says that in like season four because she never thought she would get there and that's why she didn't want to kill them because she didn't really want them to die she wanted to be accepted same with Graham like rather than just flirting with him and pursuing him in a normal way she didn't know how to do that she didn't have the skill sets and her mother always taught her basically that having a heart is bad having feelings is bad caring is bad and you need to instill what you want in people through sheer force and just be a really dominating kind of person and so that's all Regina knew she didn't know how to let people come to her or how to just be herself and that's one of the reasons why her redemption is actually in some ways very nice to see because we see her unlearning these habits and realizing that maybe if she's kind and shows up as herself she's she'll find her tribe you know her vibe will attract her tribe people will like her and they'll want to hang out with her and this is a recurring theme like in season two she kills Greg's father because she wants to have a child and she doesn't know how to keep Greg around she just wants to get rid of him so she can kidnap this child and the way she handles it is so awkward she's all smiling and fake and she's like don't you want to be a part of my little family and she doesn't know how to be warm without coming across as creepy and artificial and the kid is really scared of her and ultimately Regina has to let him go because he doesn't want to be there and he's crying and she realizes that she's forcing it's like this artificial forced intimacy but he doesn't actually want that kind of relationship with her so it would all be fake and the reason why Regina found that so upsetting is because she actually wanted him to want to be there she wanted to include him in her life she wanted to have someone to share her life with but he was scared of her and she was like oh damn it like this isn't working but regardless of her motivations regardless of how much I love her Regina's actions in season one were irredeemable and when it comes to her dating life her love life that's when Regina's worst qualities really come to the forefront she doesn't know how to let someone be themselves she just wants to control them look at how she treated Henry telling him what to be what to do like it's even reflected in her clothing choices which are so prim and proper and uptight she doesn't know how to loosen up she's a total control freak in season one Regina and Henry have an emotionally abusive codependent and stifling relationship because she's trying to force him to like her when he doesn't like her trying to force him to love her when he's not feeling it she should be allowing him to explore a relationship with Emma as his mom and she doesn't want to and that that again is very controlling and she is gaslighting him it's disgusting he knows that there's a curse he knows she's the evil queen and she's all like oh my god Henry is so delusional he's he's a very damaged kid he's got a very overactive imagination and Henry it's time to give up those silly little fantasies okay you're not a little boy anymore imagine what that does to a child's self-esteem being told day in day out that you're crazy it would start to get to you you'd start to give up and even though Henry doesn't show he seems very chipper he doesn't show many signs of someone who's got low self-esteem or who's been abused you watch when he grows up maybe the effect the aftermath of that will become more obvious even though it's not at first I reckon if you gave it time you would see him as an adult like really struggling he would need to actually go to therapy he would need help because he spent years of his life knowing that this curse was real and it was and being lied to and gaslighted by his own mother who's telling him that what he's seeing and believing is not true that he's making it up that he's the only crazy kid in the whole of Storybrooke and why can't he just be a normal kid and then making him question his own sanity and his own reality lying to him she's literally lying to him to the point that she's sending him to a shrink <laughs> to a therapist I'm calling it a shrink because like that's how it came across to Henry is like 
that he's crazy and rather than oh you're getting professional help and there's no stigma it's almost stigmatized for him because it's like oh mum thinks I'm so crazy that you know I need to speak to someone <laughs> about my overactive imagination and look at how she was with Graham she felt entitled to his attention you don't want me you want Emma you stand up to me you express your needs and your qualms I'm gonna kill you <laughs> And she kills him. Oh, you want to spend time with Emma? How dare you? And then I'm going to punch Emma in the face because you like her more than you like me. And I'm so angry and I can't handle it because I feel entitled to your attention. I never realized this really because it's always framed as like men being predators and women being innocent victims. But it's the same way for women. If you are continually like chasing a man and telling him he has to be with you or trying to force physical intimacy on him in any way and he's saying look I don't want a relationship and you're not respecting his boundaries you are entitled he does not owe you a relationship and there doesn't even need to be a reason that makes sense but Regina doesn't see it that way she feels like Graham's her little pet and basically somewhere along the line someone told her that she was owed something and that she was owed a relationship she's also as we see in season one extremely vulnerable you wouldn't think it but she is she's often doing the lovey-dovey eyes like Graham do you want to hang out and when he says oh no actually I'm not interested I don't want to come over she's like oh <gasps> What? She takes it extremely personally because she actually has a very fragile ego and she can't handle rejection. Confident people understand that rejection is normal and it's okay and it's not a reflection of their value. Even if you get rejected a hundred times, like actors in auditions, it doesn't mean anything. But Regina is very insecure, so she sees it as something is wrong with me, I need to fix it. Rather than going, it's cool, I'll find someone I'm more compatible with, she's like, no, I need to make it work with Graham and her like killing him and reacting so aggressively when he doesn't want her is actually like a trauma response and it's also very very unhealthy and I think it could have been very very I don't like the word triggering it's overused but I think it could be very triggering for a lot of people who've been abused or traumatized in childhood in any way seeing the way that she lashes out at him and kills him when he basically stands up to her and he says look Regina I mean it was a bit savage it was kind of iconic it was a bit savage he was like look Regina I don't I don't care and he says that with Emma next to him so yeah it was a pretty brutal rejection to her face but he was like look I'd rather be alone than be with you like I don't want to and yeah could he have worded it nicer sure but at the end of the day he said what he needed to say he asserted a boundary and he gave her feedback on what he didn't like about her he said that she was you know manipulative and mean or whatever and if you genuinely care about someone and you want to form a relationship with them, you will take their feedback. And for anyone that's been hurt or abused or anything in any way, you'll know that when you bring up something to an emotionally unavailable or abusive person, if you bring it up, you give them feedback, they don't take it, they're not compassionate, and they will either hurt you or they'll call you crazy or they'll break you down or they'll end the relationship altogether. They'll be like, fine, go then, right? Because your opinions, your feedback, you standing up for yourself and asserting your wants have been so like crushed down that you'll be scared of bringing up anything to that person, even a tiny thing, out of the fear that they'll end a relationship and you'll start to have this belief instilled in you that conflict means end of relationship, argument means end of relationship because it's so fragile, you can't say anything, don't say anything wrong, they'll get mad, right? So therefore I need to be a people pleaser and I can't say if there's a problem, right? And that's why Regina's behavior was so extreme and so awful because she should have been working with him, she should have listened to him and respected his boundaries, not punished him so harshly by killing him just because he said something that she didn't want to hear. With all these bad things I've told you about Regina, let's get into season two. You may be wondering, how on earth do they go from the way she is in season one to her beginning her redemption journey in season two and showing some slightly better sides or some more self-restraint. How on earth do you go from there to there? 
And I think it was because Regina was never really meant to have a redemption arc and that's why it feels so extreme. Even though they wrote it very well and they made it gradual and believable and convincing, no matter what way you look at it, it was a very abrupt transition still, no matter how slowly they took it, because of how basically her entire personality changes. And I reckon she was always meant to be a big bad. And that's why they made her cross the line so many times and do so many terrible things, like having Belle imprisoned for 28 years, because maybe they always planned to circle back around and have her be the big bad villain. She was never meant to be an anti-hero, like Rumpel, for example. Anna Perilla, the actress, really fought for Regina to get a redemption in season two. She really wanted that for the character. And this really changed the direction they took and I'm not criticizing it. I actually thought they handled the redemption well. And there's a reason why Regina became a fan favorite because they did such a damn good job of it. But the only thing that makes it a bit of a shame is that she was the best villain the show ever had. Ever. And I think they really struggled to top it with a better, more mean, more charismatic one. And that's the thing is when you remove her as a villain, you're not really left with another big bad that packs the same punch like Regina did. So they really do their best to introduce some other bad guys too, to give Regina a bit of a hard time, like Zelina. And Zelina becomes the main threat in season three, which detracts some of the attention away from Regina. So. They can still have a problem or an obstacle, which is Zelina, and then it's not gonna be Regina, right? So they're doing their best to bring in other threats, like the Snow Queen, for example, or they make Rumple a bit worse because someone, someone has to be the bad guy, right, at the end of the day. In order to have your happy ending, you can't get there without someone causing an obstacle. But because I think they changed their minds and decided to redeem her, they wanted us to kind of forget about some of the worst things she did, like what she did to Graham, and just hope we'd move on. And a lot of us did forget, but some of us, like me, <laughs> did not. The people who are hardcore fans of Regina, who basically say that she did no wrong and, you know, it's okay and she's a good guy and she was abused in her childhood, so therefore that justifies it. They often tend to really conveniently overlook every single bad thing that she did or try and rationalize it or explain it away. Everyone else is to blame but Regina or Regina had a good reason. And Regina doesn't just have to make up for one small thing. It's things that she did over the course of years like gaslighting Henry or hurting Graham. It's not a one-off thing and then people will be really, really harsh and critical of Emma or Snow White and Prince Charming for one stupid mistake they did and that's the difference ultimately between the heroes and the villains and this the same goes for life too everyone makes mistakes and messes up but a villain will continuously have the pattern of doing the same bad behavior without changing even though they know it's hurtful and that's the thing is Regina has to make up for years of bad behavior. For example, there was one time where Emma had been lying to Henry about who his father was and she'd kind of dismissed and invalidated his feelings a bit and he would felt really mad and she had to apologize and she felt really bad for kind of lying to him. But that was one mistake one time, you know, like, or a few small times, but she did what she had to do because she, you know, she was being a bit selfish, whatever, but it's not the worst thing ever. Regina was gaslighting him for years and she's still a terrible mother in season two, abusing her power and doing whatever she can to make Henry like her and trying to pit him against everyone else. And when he doesn't want to go along with what she wants, she tries to force him to going along with what she wants. And that made me realize how terrible a mother she is. She's threatening to hurt everyone unless he comes to live with her. And she's struggling to get people to do what she wants without compelling them or using magic or force or her status as evil queen. And in season two, she is very much intending on killing Charming, even though she knows that Henry cares about him and his Henry's grandfather. She doesn't care. She doesn't care about the impact on Henry, the fact that he wants a relationship with his relatives. She just wants to have him all to herself. She doesn't care that he's got a bigger family now. Regina at one point says, I was never the evil queen. You just put evil in front of my name, which is so dumb because no, she literally was the evil queen and she very much earned that title. And 
The fact that her motivation stemmed from one stupid mistake that Snow White made at 10 years old that she held against her for the rest of her life, it will never not be comical to me. Poor Snow White. And she's like, oh, Snow White, you were never very good at keeping secrets. Ah, uh, yeah, because she was a child. <laughs> What is wrong with you? In season two, she's framed for murder and is really disappointed by the fact that everyone's thinking so low of her and no one's backing her up. And that just made me laugh. That was hilarious, I have to admit. Like, seriously? <laughs> You're actually surprised that everyone believes that you're a murderer? Hmm, I wonder where they got that idea from. She stands by and lets Cora kill Snow White's friend slash old servant in front of her. Like, she's so awful. She sided with her mum in season two, even though she knows her mum can't be trusted in this ploy to try and remove everyone else and get Henry back. If Regina truly cared about Henry and she cared about who he loved, she wouldn't be trying to hurt his biological mum and grandparents intentionally. There is a clever plot twist in season two where we learn that Cora actually had consciously decided to have her own heart removed so she would feel less and therefore be able to do more evil things without her conscience getting in the way, which explains why Regina always felt subconsciously that her mum was emotionally absent because she literally was. When Regina puts back Cora's heart and Cora allows herself to feel she says to Regina, actually, I didn't need to do all these things. I did. You would always have been enough. You were enough. This uh, relationship would have been enough. And that was such a heartbreaking moment that made me cry. Honestly, the amount of times this show has made me cry is comical because Regina realized that she was doing all these things to try and get her mum's approval, thinking she wasn't good enough. And when her mum for a moment gets back in touch with her humanity and her heart, she realizes that Regina actually was a really great daughter and she should have just been grateful for what she had with her daughter rather than being so power hungry and always trying to get more and make her daughter prove that they could have had more. And even though she had this realization too late, I think she really, really meant it. I think she really realized how much she'd messed up. It was a great scene and truly heartbreaking. Also heartbreaking for Regina because she realizes that she was doing all this evil stuff she did in a weird way to prove herself and get her mum's approval. But a lot of people then take the scene and go, well, great, why can't they be friends now? They can have a great relationship. But no, one nice conversation does not erase years of abuse and all that stuff that she put Regina through and the way she treated her. It doesn't make up for that in any sense. It's not nearly enough. But after her mum dies, Regina is furious at Snow White for causing it. And that just annoyed me because again, it's like she takes a little step forward in her character development and then a step back. And Regina has this problem where she has a lot of misdirected anger. It wasn't Snow White's fault. She did what she had to do. Cora was a threat and she had to be removed. And I don't like how Regina has this selective memory and has now decided after this one nice conversation that her mum was an amazing mum who didn't deserve to die because is she forgetting everything that her mother put her through? No wonder Snow White had to kill her. And in a way she did what she had to do, even though it was manipulative. Regina was going to use this beanstalk to take Henry away and then detonate the whole of Storybrooke in season two, which is again, do you know how insane that is? <laughs> All the people he cared about that she would have hurt. It shows that she's still very much a villain, but the one thing that changed was she regretted it and tried to fix her mistake. She has a very selfless action in the season two finale and tries to remedy what she did. And she tries to sacrifice herself as well because she realizes that she can't go through with it and that was a good move for her. She's willing to die as long as she will die as herself as Regina and finally have Henry be proud of her as a mom and as a role model rather than ashamed of her, which was her first big bit of progress. Now let's get into season three, which is when I would argue a majority of Regina's very noticeable character development takes place, where she shifts from sort of villain in season one and two to anti-hero. And this is maybe my favorite period or phase of Regina's. Here's my thing, I like, multifaceted characters. In season one, I found her a bit too scary <laughs> and mean for my liking. And then at the end of the show, I find her boring and a bit too nice and kind of stagnant. My favorite is like the confusing in-between where she's extremely hilarious with the best one-liners. Doctor? Doctor. 
Need I remind you, you got your PhD from a curse. And doing well for Henry, and she's reluctantly pairing with the Charmings, but also she can still just be honestly really mean, and she very much uses magic to get her way, and she approaches things in a more cutthroat way than the Charmings that they don't really like. So she's got a lot of good and a lot of bad, but she's not too much of the one thing, and so that's my favorite like phase of hers. I wish she could have stayed in this period like honestly forever because it's so fun to watch. But she's in this very confusing limbo state between villain and between hero and she's doing some good things to help get to Henry and she's sort of tolerating the charmings and working with them but at the same time they're getting into all these stupid petty fights and it's just very entertaining to watch. But one of my favorite scenes is in the opening of season three when Hook and Regina are on the boat and they have a little conversation about villains and how villains don't get happy endings. And Regina's like, well, if we are villains, then maybe this is all pointless because we won't get a happy ending. That's the point. And Hook replies, well, in that case, we've wasted our lives. That made me realize that Hook and Regina want their happy endings and they don't consider themselves really villains, which is why Regina hates the term evil queen, because in their own minds, they are justified in their own narratives and they think they're doing the right thing according to their own little story. But that also annoys me because when you have that attitude of, oh, I don't really want to be a villain, am I? It means that you never are truly honest with yourself and you never face accountability. And that's the biggest issue with Regina's arc is that at points it felt like she wasn't really looking back on all of the bad things she'd done and the people she hurt because she's taking this kind of slightly self-centered perspective. For example, in season three when she says, I don't feel regret because it got me my son. There's this spell which plays on your regrets, but she realizes she doesn't have any regrets because at the end of the day, it made her who she is and it got her, her son Henry and her life. If she wasn't the evil queen, she never would have got Henry and it's worth it. That's a really messed up thing to say. You're basically saying killing all those people and hurting them was worth it. And everyone sees it as this empowering, heroic, shining moment. And I don't see it that way at all. I find it gross. She's also being a much better mother to Henry in season 3B. She's extremely sad about being separated from him and if he loses his memories, not being able to be his mother, but not in a toxic possessive way. She just genuinely will miss him. And that was a big step for her. There is also a very interesting idea presented. We learned through Tinkerbell that Regina could have had a chance for happiness years ago because she saw Robin Hood and she was told that he would be her true love if she approached him, but she was too scared to approach him in the bar and ran away from him because she was scared of love and she wasn't ready. This is one of the things I loved about Regina's redemption arc and why it was the best in the show out of all the other characters' redemption arcs. And this is why I can't be mad at it ultimately, because we got her backstory, we got her taking two steps forward, two steps back. It wasn't really linear, it was very gradual, they took their time. We saw her struggling with herself and her identity Entity and kind of owning up to what she did, having mixed emotions. And we saw the awkward in-between phase where she was doing some good things and some bad things. And also we see her humanity. So we see how she's scared of love, scared of getting hurt, like with Robin Hood. And that makes her a much more relatable character. This is when we really see her transition from anti-hero to more hero full stop. We see a lot more scenes of her forming a friendship with Snow White, which is wonderful to see. I wouldn't say they're best friends, but they're a lot closer. They have a lot more respect for each other. And she is almost in awe of Charming and Snow's relationship. And she's even complimenting them being like, wow, those two are such a power couple. No matter what happens, they'll always find their way back to each other. And she's more in awe of their relationship and impressed by them as opposed to resenting them and trying to ruin it. And she does help them at multiple points. Like when Snow White wants to share her heart with Charming, Regina helps her. And by this point, when Regina was going through stuff like difficulties in her relationship with Robin Hood, I felt bad because I know she didn't say the word sorry much or I apologize, but she'd shown through her actions that she was willing to self-sacrifice and help people multiple times. And so it did start to feel very, very cruel. And the writers sort of pushing their narrative of you need to take accountability and happy endings aren't for villains onto Regina, unfortunately. So she really face the brunt of it. So it was like, no matter what she did, no matter how hard she tried, she kept being put into very like punishing, 
depressing situations where she was faced again with the prospect of needing to be alone and needing to be unhappy and it did start to become very sad. And no one really had much empathy for her considering this idea that evil creates more evil. Once you commit one evil act, your heart gets blacker. It's almost like an addiction. It's harder to stop and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so for someone like Regina to break those old habits and do good things would have been very difficult. And what she needed actually was people to kind of believe in her growth like Henry and it's good that he did. I was annoyed at her in season four when she was so angry at Emma for bringing back Marion because Emma did what she had to do. Like I, I talked about this in my other video. I was annoyed at Emma for bringing Marion back not because you know, Emma shouldn't have wanted to help an innocent person, but because she was told not to mess with time travel and had no idea what the consequences of that would be, rescuing someone who's supposed to be dead would have potentially huge consequences. So I felt like it was just stupid and a bit reckless, but I understand why she did it. But Regina was more mad at her because she was like, oh, you've ruined my chance of a happy ending. Why did you bring back Marion? Rather than realizing that this was someone that she was going to execute and kill and Emma was doing what she had to do. She has no right to take a moral high ground or be annoyed at Emma for literally trying to save an innocent victim that would have died at Regina's hand. And she was just whinging and crying and that whole self-pitying I'm a victim narrative I deserve a happy ending too was getting really annoying because it's like, no, maybe you don't deserve a happy ending. Maybe you're irredeemable. At first she's struggling with her own dark instincts and she just wants to get Marion out the way and kill her and just end her, remove her selfishly so she can have Robin to herself. But she ends up coming to an acceptance that maybe she shouldn't do that and her and Robin should just be separate, she should stay away from him and he and um, Marion should make it work for their child. And that was more mature of her. I'm glad that she got there eventually. And I'm really, really proud and glad that she did that because it shows that she took a step back from her usual habits of control and coercion and she knew she had to let him go. We see her bonding more with Emma and when they have an argument, Emma's actually really upset about it and trying to fix it and says to her in season four, I feel like we could actually be friends, like maybe we are friends because Emma's realized that actually through spending all this time with Regina, they've got a lot in common and they get along really well. But she's constantly getting shit on Regina and even in season five with Robin dying, it just emphasizes how the writers didn't really want to see her happy, like she's continually being punished. And honestly, Robin did not treat Regina that well. At first he chose Marion when she came back for the sake of their child and I was like, okay, fair enough. He's got this loyalty code thing, so he's trying to abide by it. And then around the Frozen episodes, he decides he can't stay away from Regina, so he comes back to her and I was so happy. I was like, oh my gosh, he saw sense. The healthiest thing and the healthiest example for him to set to his child would be to show that you should be with who you're supposed to be with. And if Regina makes him happy, he should be with Regina because that teaches his kid a good lesson about maybe sometimes following your heart and closing certain chapters of your life, right? It made sense to me. But then when Marion gets sick, Robin's suddenly like, sorry, I need to go look after her and he leaves Regina. There was too much back and forth and it was honestly very disrespectful of Regina's heart and her time and he needed to make a decision and stick to it. So he leaves with Marion and Regina has to come back for him ages later because she realizes that Marion's been almost possessed or it's an imposter. So she goes to warn him rather than him listening to her. He's like, look, Regina, you need to accept that. You know, I can't be with you. And it was so annoying. Like she wasn't making shit up. She was genuinely trying to save him, like worried about his safety. And then what pissed me off more is he finds out that she's right. It is an imposter. It's Selena, that he's actually been RIPE'd, that he's been assaulted and that Regina's come to save him. And he still has this weird ass loyalty code that he chooses to stick to of, sorry, Regina, like, thank you for telling me, but I do feel a certain obligation to look after this child. So in conclusion, what do I think of Regina? I know a lot of people don't like her because they say her lack of saying I'm sorry and lack of accountability shows and therefore it makes her a bad character because she doesn't say sorry enough. I kind of disagree with this. I've had it happen many times with people where they've hurt me and I'm sure you guys have had the same thing. They've been disrespectful and they say, oh yeah, sorry, that was the wrong thing for me to do, my bad. Like I shouldn't have done that. Like that wasn't a good way of handling the situation. And then they go and they do it again and again. 
and then they're like, oh yeah, sorry. And sorry just becomes this blanket, almost insulting word, because you can tell they don't mean it. So words mean nothing if they're not accompanied with actions. And I felt like even though Regina didn't go around saying how sorry she was all the time, she did show through her actions that she was willing to help people and be more of a hero role. So that was fine, in my opinion. Actually, considering how serious some of her crimes were, I think it was more important that she showed she was sorry rather than just like going around spilling out a whole monologue. And also the thing is, it's a TV show, right? She can't really sit there and write out a list of all the millions of bad things she's done because there were countless and say, okay, um, I'm sorry for how I treated Graham. That was really wrong. I understand now that boundaries are important. I'm really sorry for gaslighting Henry and lying to him. That wasn't okay. I'm sorry for bullying Emma when she first arrived. Like, <laughs> it would get very, very boring. It would be like a Shakespearean soliloquy. It would take her like 10 minutes of listing off every single bad thing she ever did. So that would have been a bit tacky as well. A lot of people get very caught up in, but in real life, this wouldn't be realistic. In real life, if someone was that evil, they would never change because they're a psychopath and they're irredeemable and it's unrealistic. Like that's what people get very, very caught up in and that's where we kind of tripwire ourselves is, but this isn't realistic. This would never happen. And I think it's important therefore to kind of suspend your disbelief a little bit and set it aside because this is a fairy tale world. It's not a true crime thriller. It's just a fairy tale world. The whole world is based in metaphors and you know, symbolism, moral messages, and it's not so much about would this actually happen. And if you keep applying the real world rules or legal jargon, you're going to get very, very tripped up. And if you just look at the themes of the show, right, one of the main themes is about hope and happy endings. So it wouldn't make sense if there was only hope for certain characters. This is a story about belief too, believing in people. It would be a bit weird if we only believed in the heroes. It would also be a bit weird if the only people who had a prospect for a hopeful future were the good guys. I think it's much more interesting if we apply this idea of hope and happy endings to everyone and give happy endings to everyone, even people like Regina. You leave the show in a very positive, uplifted mood, feeling like basically anything is possible. And I think that's really lovely. Let's have a little discussion about it down in the comments. See you guys for the next one.